Okay, let's go in there. Noswaitar, good evening everyone and welcome to my, my Facebook Live. It's a Panad uh, with Virginia. We've had some absolutely fantastic guests over the last few weeks and it's going to be my pleasure to introduce uh, Michael, uh, 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 who is from um, FSB Wales. But first I wanted to um, start by saying thank you to all of those that have been sending me in uh, mugs for my Panad with Virginia. And this one is from the Samaritans, uh, which is uh, a charity that's very, very close to my heart. So thank you, Jochen Bell, all of those who've been sending in a mugs, keep those coming. Now, um, Net Zero is very important to me and I've just hot footed it from Westminster Hall where I've been giving a speech in a debate on Net Zero and certainly um, speaking quite a lot about uh, Wilver and new nuclear at Wilver. Then um, last week I was uh, at home on Anglesey. I lived just outside Hollyhead and I met up with some of the companies, um, Bic Innovation at MSpark and also Ametex, which is just in Gerwin. These are a couple of companies in addition to the likes of Mona Lifting in Clangevny that have benefited from the 2.7 million community renewal fund. Uh, this fund's part of this fund, uh, the group Clendrin and Men I have been working with Greener Edge to help some of our companies deliver net zero. And I'll be showing facing some of these companies on Wednesday the 22nd of November where I've got another Anglesey Day in Westminster in the Jubilee Hall so if you're a company that is working to deliver net zero or if you're an individual or constituent that would like to come along and celebrate Anglesey then to do please get in touch and um, charities on um, this job doesn't come with a manual and I genuinely genuinely try to make tomorrow a better day uh, for as many as possible and there are things we have to do as an MP, but there are also things we do because of our life experiences. So it was great on Monday to support the RNLI in Marlborough and judge the uh, dog show. And then on Saturday um, in Tesco's in Hollyhead, I bumped into Emma Hart, who uh, heads up the uh, chemo, uh, chemo care bags and uh, did a little video with her. And then in the chamber today, actually, it was health questions. And um, uh, the Secretary of State for Health, uh, Steve Barclay, uh, gave a big shout out to Emma Hart and her team from Chemo Care Bags. Uh, they supply um, bags of um, uh, little things like, so uh, fluffy socks, coloring books, puzzle books, lip salve, and mints, more mints for, uh, for people going in to start chemotherapy in Asfati, Gwyneth. So big shout out for them and all those that support uh, this charity. Now mental health is something that's very important to me and it's very close to my heart and um, I spoke in a debate yesterday there's a petition uh, for duty of care for students at university and I spoke about um, uh, Murray Fawkes who is a, uh, a young lady that's tragically um, she received she was studying in her second year at uh, Cardiff University and she received an email uh, saying that she wouldn't be passing uh, going into year three and she uh, tragically uh, tragically took her life. So I spoke in that debate about that with the permission of her, her family. And um, then uh, today, um, uh, small businesses are really important to me. And actually on Friday, it was small, it was um, fish and chip day. And so uh, celebrating all of our fish and chip eateries on the island. And um, I actually got the opportunity to work uh, behind the counter at uh, Sergio's fish and chip uh, shop, but we've got loads of absolutely fantastic fish and chip shops all over the island who are really, um, it's really, really tough in terms of the um, energy, in terms of um, uh, some of their, their supply chain as well. So please do, uh, do support them. And um, in that vein, it's the uh, Shellfish Association annual dinner tonight. It's a black tie dinner, which is why I'm dressed like this in Fishmongers Hall aptly. And I've been invited along by um, the Hill family who own, um, uh, the lobster pot. Uh, we've got Tristan, uh, we have got Graham and also uh, Julie. So I'd like to um, uh, give them a big shout out and I'm really looking forward uh, tonight. But now I'd like to hand over to, to um, uh, Michael, uh, Michael Learman, who uh, heads up FSB Wales. Perhaps you'd like to introduce yourself, Michael, and uh, tell people a little bit about your background. Uh, why are you FSB Wales? Why have you got the accent that you've got? And a little bit about your journey. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much for the invitation to have this panel with you, Virginia. A um, little bit about my background. Um, as you can see, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking to you from my garden office. Uh, I noticed that you had men in sheds a couple of weeks ago, so I thought I'd, uh, I'd just share my real background with you. Um, mm. I do know what you mean when you said, tell me about my background. That's a bit of a bad <laughs> joke, so I do apologise. Um, I'm originally from Northern Ireland. I uh, moved over to uh, Scotland uh, 
Stirling University. And I ended up in uh, Chester and then over to North Wales. Um, I've had a, a varied career, um, but I do feel that I haven't really done much before FSB because I've been with FSB for 16 years. I've worked for some small companies. I've worked for some large companies. Um, I have actually had my own business at one stage, um, which was taught me a lot of life lessons. And it was interesting that you talked about mental health because mental health is such a big issue for business owners, particularly over the last couple of years or so. It can be really, really lonely to run a business. And that's sort of where FSB come in, to be honest. We, we're, we're like a big brother. Um, during the early days of COVID, my, my phone was ringing absolutely constantly because people didn't know where to go for information. And a lot of the time, businesses just wanted to have a chat and, and tell me their problems. And I was able to tr sort of try and listen sympathetically and sometimes give some um, proper signposting to where help would be available. So that, that's one just one aspect of, of what we do. Shall I just tell you a little bit, a bit about FSB for anyone? Yeah, really Not helpful, Michael. Thank you. So, Thank you. Federation of Small Businesses was formed in 1974. Um, so we're going to be celebrating our 50th anniversary next year. Um, it was founded appropriately enough by a gentleman called Norman Small. Um, and he actually uh, lived in Menai Bridge. Um, a period of time and it's making as many sorry, you know, this is a, a subject that is i'm trying to get sorry just get... to talk about it's okay. uh, so basically uh the, the fsb was founded by a letter which he wrote to the guardian um for anyone listening or watching that's old enough to remember 1974 it was a time of very strong unions british leyland all that sort of stuff big companies were calling the shots and he just felt that the vast majority of businesses in the UK didn't have a voice and that's how the FSB was founded so we set up a, a branch network Anglesey actually was one of the very first branches which was set up um that's for amazing FSB. Michael because we we've got the first WI as well so we are really ah, sort of exactly. leading the way in so many different things that's excellent that's really good to hear so originally we were basically a campaigning and lobbying group and we had a, a, a reasonable sized membership but we realized that we needed to grow that membership in order to get the year of of decision makers so a pivotal time for us was we we introduced a, a series of member benefits to encourage people to to join us and they've grown over the years and we've got really i think a, a world beating suite of uh, benefits that members can draw upon. Chief amongst those would be our legal protection. So we have a, a call centre with, I think, 40 fully qualified lawyers where you can call them 24 hours 40? a day. 40? That's an enormous number. How many members have you got in total? Like one each? <laughs> how, how many what? Sorry? How many members have you got in total? With that 40 in, lawyers? In the UK, we've got about 165,000 members. And how um, many on Anglesey? I know you can't say the individual companies because of GDPR, but how many on Anglesey? About 300, I think we've got about 350 on Anglesey. Um, okay. We always want more, so if anyone wants to find out a little bit about us, please get in touch. We're, we're not for profit, um, and we're, we're apolitical. We don't accept government money. Um, so everything that, that we um, earn via sub, our member subscription goes back into supplying member benefits. Um, so I mentioned the. How do you differ from the CBI, apart from some of the obvious things that well, have come up? Well, <laughs> okay. well um, how, I don't want to get into that conversation. No, but how do you differ in terms of so your? The CBI generally um, represent very large businesses, and they are purely a lobbying organisation. So they don't offer any member benefits. Um, so they don't have that legal protection, employment protection. We, we employ ex-tax inspectors, for example, if you have a tax investigation to make sure that you actually pay what you should be paying. We have health and safety advice, cyber protection. Uh, we have our own insurance service. We have uh, free banking. So the CBI is just purely, a, you, as a big company, you join the CBI because you think they're going to have an influence with government. Well, we, we do have influence with government, but we do also offer that series of 
of um, member benefits. Um, so there are other. Give us an example. What, I don't want you to name companies, but what sort of sectors? What sort of sectors would be able to benefit most from you? So the our, our top three sectors would be retail and hospitality, professional services, and construction. Um, but we do actually have members from right across every single sector. Um, we used to used to highlight the fact we actually had a, a bagpipe manufacturer was was one of wow, the, really? one of our members. So everybody can get something from FSB. But what I would say is that if you have employees, you definitely need to be looking at what we offer because if at the moment everyone is so litigious. Um, so if you need to discipline a member of staff, for example, um, if as long as you follow the advice that we give you, if you subsequently end up in an in a employment tribunal, we would represent you. And if we lost the case, we'd actually pick up the tab. Now, that, that could finish off a small business. Yeah. Wow. Um, the other thing I'd like to say, I mean, it's difficult to put a figure on number of businesses in, because there's 5.5 million small businesses in the UK. I think there's about 165,000 businesses in Wales. Mm -hmm. Now, 99% of those businesses are actually small businesses, and 97% of those are micro businesses. Yeah. Um, so Wales we've, got, a, um, we've got Dylan Hughes who's jumped on. He says, uh, "Small uh, Dylan says small businesses are the fundamentally the biggest asset to our communities, especially here on Anglesey and in Valley." Uh, Dylan is a, a community councillor in in Valley, and uh, Dylan's that's a really really important point. Um, Kenneth Kenneth Chalice Jones says, "How are you, Virginia?" That's a very interesting um, spelling of uh, Virginia, Kenneth. I don't think I've seen that before, but anyway, um, hope you are okay. I'm really really fine, uh, Kenneth. Thank you very much for asking, and thank you for joining us, uh, joining us tonight. Yeah, I would I would agree with Dylan. Um, the small businesses are the glue that holds communities together. They're not just part of the community; they are the community. They they, they um, they supply the employment, they very often they supporting local projects. Um, you know, yeah, they're absolutely entrenched within the community. And that's why sometimes you need to think about inward investment. You know, when we, mm. when we, we, we were in a position in Wales some, quite some time ago where we were chasing these massive, great big companies and giving them lots and lots of money to, to locate in Wales. And then when the grant funding ran out they up sticks and disappear again now with small businesses they're actually if you think of it as a little plant that you're planting in the soil yeah. um, that they're actually rooted in that community and as they grow they they can expand but they're absolutely part of the community and that's why it's important to grow small businesses rather than just sort of try and chase inward investment um for, for big companies that have no sort of uh, roots in, in 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 the local area okay no that, 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 that was excellent and then you talked a little bit about about the issues um facing members and i know you've had a, a survey um that you published recently what are the sort of key points coming out of that that survey um well the good news for the latest we we, we have a, a consumer uh, that's right business confidence survey every every quarter and we just published the, the recent one the good news is that what I always knew is that small businesses are resilient and they are starting to becoming more confident in the future. Um, I think probably because energy prices have dropped a little bit. Yeah. Um, I know inflation is, a, is another headwind that, that they're uh, facing at the moment, but they have been through such a torrid time since 2020 um, that at last they're actually looking at, um, we, we have an increasing number of businesses that are actually thinking about increasing employment, about growing. Yeah. Um, so they, they, they hopefully, if there's no other economic shocks, um, okay. we, we can start getting back to some sort of uh, business growth and business as usual. But that's not to say that there aren't many, many challenges facing businesses at the moment, not least the, the fact that consumers don't have as as much uh, red, you know, disposable income as as they 
Uh, and what, what challenges are specifically to to honest morn because obviously we've, we've got the the tourism and hospitality sector that we're very exposed to and um, there was a survey um on the 20 mile an hour limit that was uh that had to be closed because so many people uh, had filled in the survey with the welsh government plans uh there uh, and obviously we've had challenges relating to the sudden closure of the menai suspension bridge and then the britannia bridge as well last week and then um, uh, di different limitations uh, 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 as well. So what, what do you see as the challenges that might be as you know, a bit more focused on the businesses on Honest Morn? I think you've put your finger on it, really. It's, it, infrastructure is one of the major issues mm -hmm. on Honest Morn. Um, we saw with the closure of the Menai Bridge, the vulnerability of the crossings. Yeah. Um, and the other day when the Britannia Bridge was, was closed, sadly, because of that big accident, but you know, even even the A55 has its issues on the approach to the island. You know, with yeah. you know, it's been well documented with you know no hard shoulders and everything. But, and there's been so many false dawns, hasn't there, on a third crossing? Um, I think with the announcement of the Freeport, I think that strengthens the argument for a third Menai crossing and to mm. you know to get that in place so that we've. Um, we, we've got a good supply chains. Um, I mean, we've all been stuck in traffic, but I, I was stuck in, in traffic crossing the bridge the other day, and it just struck me because the, the, the little van in front of me um, belonged to like a, a care in the community type business. Right. Yeah. And it just struck me, I'm thinking, well, you know, we know that they've only got a certain limited amount of time with each of their clients, and mm -hmm. I'm thinking, is this going to cause you know mm. distress to the clients problems for the business um because you know businesses need to get to where they need to get to um no exactly, exactly. Need to be delivered ben, uh, all, kenneth all chalice jones stuff. is suggesting a tunnel thank you very much for that uh kenneth um and in terms of um you one of the things you talked about this whole blend and ex extend you know when companies have negotiated their energy supply contracts and what we're what we're doing there i know my colleague uh, Robin Miller has a, a survey as well going out, and then something that he's mentioned in in Treasury questions uh, recently. Um, and I, you know, in terms of my post back, a lot of companies are being concerned about that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, energy costs are such a massive um, problem for many many businesses, and particularly those that came to the end of their uh, fixed term contracts. Um, during the, the time when the energy prices were so high and then had to sort of sign up for very, very high contracts. And some of these may be for like between you know, two, three years. And the the, the increases are eye-watering. I mean, you're looking at like nine, so what, ten. What's, what's your what's um, what advice are you giving? What are your so what, what we're we're actually lobbying the energy companies and mm -hmm. we're saying, you know. Our surveys have, have said that many businesses are saying that they're not actually going to be able to survive. So if you want to take a long term view of this, then really you need now that energy prices have come down, then you need to renegotiate with the businesses. And that's what we're calling blend and, and extend so mm. that they can sort of blend what they've already got and extend that contract, but on, on a more favorable basis and a fairer basis mm. so that businesses businesses like like to plan ahead they don't like unexpected shocks so even though prices may be relatively high at least they can sort of build that into their business plans um so that's what we're doing at the moment i'm really pleased to say that british gas for for example announced last week that they would look at that so my advice yeah. to businesses if you are in a really high contract uh contact your energy provider mention the fsb lobbying and see what uh yeah. That's You've got a lot of um, uh, uh, sort of individuals and businesses that have got off essentially off grid um, energy in terms of like oil and, and oil and gas as, uh, LPG as well. So they're, they're, that's sort of quite um, it's, it's a huge percentage actually on the island. It's around I think it's around between forty and fifty percent of the yeah. sort of not not attached to the the mains. And I know that's an issue. I've got lots more questions coming in. Um, so um, Nicholas Grenfell Martin, he when you were talking about connectivity, he says not forgetting the service by air to Cardiff. It's lost shows how difficult the train service to the capital is. Absolutely, Avanti um, and transport for Wales. It's uh, it's it's getting better, um, but it is just so important. We've actually got that uh, got that connectivity. And Jason Awida, um, hi, uh, Jason Noswaitha. 
what funding is available to small businesses at the moment? I know that Business Wales has closed their grants. You heard from Monsieur today that the pots are dry. Is there anything Michael knows of in the pipeline or other funding and grants available to help new and existing small businesses? And this is certainly um, something, Jason, that my team uh, can help with too. But let's hear, let's hear from Michael. So the, the grant culture in, in Wales has sort of, uh, there's not that, that much available anymore, but what there is, is the Development Bank of Wales, which will, uh, ha has a small business fund. Um, so it is a loan, um, but they, they can step in when the mainstream banks um, aren't mm -hmm. playing ball. And, and at the moment, access to finance is a, is a major issue. For many, many businesses, the banks are, are being a little bit sort of um, careful, shall I say, in terms of their lending. So Development Bank of Wales is, is absolutely something that they should be looking at. The other thing that hopefully will be happening is that I've been working with lots of local authorities on the shared prosperity funds. And right. there's been lots of applications coming in, but some of the local authorities themselves have put an application in um, mm. in order to have a pot of money that they can then... Um, distribute to, to to smaller businesses and quite often a small business maybe only needs a couple of thousand pounds or something for a new piece yeah. of or something um, it's not always these you know crazy you know quarter of a million pound grants that some of some of the, the larger companies are going for so that would be coming on the horizon relatively soon I mean the pace is is moving quite quickly on that um, incidentally I was in Hollyhead um, this afternoon, um, just talking about some of the levelling up um, funding, yep. and some of the projects that are coming along with that. So it, it's not quite your, your question about what grants are available, but it was really interesting to hear some of the great projects that are happening in the town of Hollyhead this afternoon. No, absolutely. And, and there's seven. So the Shred Prosperity funding was um, 16 million and 3 million of that is for the multiply for the maths. And then the levelling up fund uh, was uh, 17 million and that's been uh, match funded by uh, more than 20 uh, million uh, pounds so significant um, funds going into Hollyhead and there's uh, six uh, uh, several projects six projects from the um, um, from the um, St Cubby's Church uh, being developed to the uh, Caldra Centre to a tourism office in the uh, Breakwater Park to the play centre to having these uh, sort of kiosks down the side and it really is it's about having joined up thinking and uh, we've got that port there and, and one of the questions coming through is uh, is freeport status so we've got make it your business on this morning it says i used to be a member of the fsb and the support they gave was brilliant that's excellent um how would local um small businesses benefit from something like a freeport or from wilver now i know how i'd answer that question but i mean you're, you're my guest here tomorrow oh. so how, how <laughs> thank you okay well um i mean the business plans are still being worked on for the freeports but our position is that Small businesses need to be front and centre uh, with these discussions. Um, there will be supply chain opportunities. Um, there will be opportunities. I mean, just because a business is small in terms of number of employees doesn't mean that it isn't at the cutting edge of technology or can uh, take advantage yeah. of all the, uh, all, all the uh, benefits of free port status. So I'm hoping that, you know, there will be um, businesses, smaller businesses engaged with that. Um, I know that, you know, we talk about displacement and that's something that we have to be careful that that doesn't happen, that businesses just simply relocate to the free port because it's a, it's more advantageous for them. So we need to be growing and, and attracting new businesses. Um, but I think, yeah, the, there are going to be lots of opportunities, but we need to sort of bake that into the business plan uh, once, once that's yeah. sort of... Uh, I've got a, a little plug for, for my team. Um, we've got a few events coming up, actually. And uh, one of them is on Friday, the 21st of July with Men's Morning Clangedney. We're doing a, a, a sort of Facebook seminar. So I've been bringing companies around the island uh so companies that are looking to invest in uh, in anglesey specifically because they've had three ports they just not they weren't looking to invest anywhere else in wales it's specifically on anglesey because of our newfound free port status but also want to ensure that the, the, the 
companies and individuals on the islands have got the skills and the, the, the plans in place to make sure that they can take advantage of our, our newfound uh, renaissance. And I've sort of got a couple of events. One is on the 21st of July at Mentum and the other is on the 8th of, uh, 8th of September at M Spark. And hopefully, uh, Michael, you'll be coming uh, along to that as well with some of your, with, with some of your colleagues. Uh, we've got a few more questions coming in. Um, uh, Dylan uh, says, here in Valley, their small businesses are really important. And uh, Dylan uh, names how they're bringing together people together, such wonderful businesses as the Bay Tree Gallery, which is brilliant. I went in to see them actually at the weekend. They've got some fantastic jigsaw puzzles. Uh, Quits Yankee Candles, Cards and Gifts, Sergio's Fish and Chips, um, KLM Hair in Valley, and also the Valley Hotel, who are uh, very excellent. Um, uh, yeah, Jed Hartshorn from the Gwendon Holiday Home in Anglesey. Will there be investment in areas such as Amloch in the north of the island? How well do you know the north of the island, Michael? Um, well, I've, I've, as I say, I've been with FSB for 16 years, so I've been <laughs> many, many trips to Anglesey. I was in uh, Jobs Fair at Amloch in the, in, in the um, town hall a, a couple of about a month ago i did an over 50s i did an over 50s event actually at the denorban yeah. arms hotel actually and that, that yeah. was good that, so what, that, what we will be doing is starting networking events again okay um, but in terms of, of the uh, i mean the leveling up is for hollyhead that's a, a particular project but there will be other funds available um and it's up to i'm look town council i guess to sort of uh, bid yeah. for that funding yeah um, no and Jed said the Octel site in Amlock is right for investment. Yeah, a great question there. The old, um, so the, uh, the, the, and also the Roscork, um, the old shell tanker site as well. That's one of the four key areas that are um, in in the Freeport. There is the um, Park Cubby site in Hollyhead. We've got the um, the um, uh, the Eco Park um, that uh, Sten have bought from uh, from Orthios, and we've also got um, M Spark as well. So we've got four sites on the island, but the whole island, I think it's important to uh, to highlight, will actually benefit. Um, so Frederica is on a train. Thank you, Frederica, for jumping on. Really appreciate your support. Do you feel small retailers in Hollyhead would benefit from reasonable rental properties, plus free car parking to be able to compete with the retail park um, close close by? Yeah, I mean, we, we published a report on town centres um, a few months ago. The sad thing in that report was something like only 3% of businesses, of, of, of people that we surveyed said that the mm. high street, their high street was thriving. Wow. Um, now, there's a big issue around parking, um, absolutely. And, and to compete with the, the uh, out-of-town retailers, parking needs to be accessible, uh, convenient. Um, I'm not convinced about free, to be honest. I'll tell you why, because I went to... Uh, I was in Wrexham uh, recently and I couldn't actually get parked because every, all the council car parks are free after 11 mm. o'clock and they're absolutely yeah. clogged with people oh. working up yeah. all day. So, yeah. I mean, if it if it's cheap and, and you can sort of, you know, sometimes it's, it's only like 30 pence or something for half an hour if you just need to sort of park up, get a pint of milk. Yeah, exactly. But you know so what what the authority, local authorities do at Christmas, for example, um, they, they make it free to, to encourage Christmas shopping. So anything we can do to encourage people back into the high streets, absolutely we need to do yeah. that. But it's it's more than just retail. We need to get communities going yeah. in, in towns and other things, cultural events, um, other, you know, just, just to get that blend of of to, to get mm. people into the town a reason to mm. visit we are uh, seeing at new shops like yeah, becca's morn and uh, we are seeing new shops actually opening up in hollyhead and it, it you know i think hopefully with the leveling up fund and the likes of mon cf uh, supporting businesses mm. and, and and others so i think that's good uh, lydia mcguire hi um quite so welcome lydia lovely lovely to have you on board uh, we're getting up to our time uh, michael but i wanted to say thank you jock and thank you so much for jumping on board and for all you do to support um, small businesses on uh, on Anglesey and I know you've uh, you know you, you've spent some time in Hollyhead today and um, I'd like to say that um, tomorrow I've got uh, Westminster uh, I've got the Welsh Fair Select Committee in the morning and then we've got uh, Women and Equalities and then Prime Ministers 
questions. Um, it was, uh, it's also a National Carers Week and I met up with some carers today actually. And also I met up with the, we talked about mental health earlier and the, um, the NFU, the National Farmers Union have got um, a, a charity initiative um, for mental health called um, DPJ. So um, I also met up with, um, with them. Um, on Thursday, I'll be going, um, hot footing it back to the islands and I'm taking UK Atomics around the island and going to visit um, the, uh, the, the uh, Eco Park site and also take them up to up to Wilver. And then on Friday, uh, a centre for 175 million of UK government money, uh, new investment, and I'll be going to see how that investment is making a difference to RAF Valley and hopefully catching up with uh, Dewey, Dewey Williams. And then I'm taking Bocard, uh, which is an engineering company around uh, the uh, around the island do say hello if you see if you see me uh, in the afternoon I'm catching up with the vice chancellor of Bangor University Edmund Burke in Dillon's in Menai Bridge and um, I will also be going to the Gotwood Festival um, in the evening and then my next uh, my next Facebook live uh, next week I'm um, hopefully having a uh, Mims Davis who's a minister and she, uh, along with the Anglesey DWP uh, team, Tony Potter, will be talking about UK government access to work. I've got this big um, over 50s uh, jobs fair coming up on Thursday, the 29th of June in Hollyhead Town Hall. It's free, got loads and loads of businesses, charities, organisations. Do please come along. Uh, you will get a warm welcome and hopefully some new ideas as to... Um, some uh, other things you can look at. So that leads me to say, Jock Morel, thank you so much, Michael. Uh, really appreciate you you joining oh. yourself. And I've also, actually, I've also got a student here, Trixie. Do you want to come and say hello, Trixie? <laughs> I've had you guys in here. I'm normally Hello. in my office by myself, so it's been great, yeah. to, great to have company. It's been really make amazing. sure I've got an FSB mug for you, Virginia. The, oh, I'll, that'd I'll be amazing. One, I'll, yeah, keep I'll bring one to, to the Anglesey show. Oh, that'd be fantastic. You, uh, uh, can you I just very, very quickly mention FSB Day, which yep. is on the 14th of June. That's right. If any members are listening, just log in to the website, chance to win £5,000 and lots of discounts on many of our services. So thanks okay. for the opportunity to, to, to talk to your constituents. All right, you take care, Michael. Lovely, lovely. It's been a very, very lovely panad with you. All right, take care. Bye-bye-bye. Till next time.